Chuck, it's that time of year. All right. Well, yes, of course it is. It's the most wonderful time of the year. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Actually, yes. Uh, I, I could have said that maybe half a dozen times in any given year because each year offers its array of meteor showers. Each uh, have a name. Okay. And each one, it's 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 Earth plowing through space junk, nice. except cosmic junk, not not human made junk. Right. So <laughs> exactly. So so we're coming up on the Geminids. So the Geminids is a meteor shower that shows up second week of December, like December thirteenth, fourteenth, around there. Sweet. And you might ask. I, I, I don't know if you did, but okay. you might ask, why do meteor showers show up the same time each year? You know, I, I did ask that. Uh, I don't think you heard me. But why do <laughs> meteor showers <laughs> show up the same time each year? You know, because these Geminids, they're, you know, they always show up in December. Like, what's, go, what's up with that? Right. <laughs> what's the deal now, with the Geminids? <laughs> Uh, the Geminids are less popular only because meteor showers are best viewed late at night, uh -huh. after midnight, when you're right. just sort of laying out on a lawn, right. you know, That's... sipping a drink. Right. And if it's the second week of December, mm, you're not, not doing that. <laughs> not the best. Not the best time to do that. You know. <laughs> there's a there's a better sort of user friendly meteor shower right. that takes place in August. And it's called the Perseids. The Perseids. And that's like, yeah, that's the second week of August every year. Right. And it's August. So you get some lawn chairs. You go out. You uh, sit. Hang out late and right. look up and, and watch the meteors fall. But I want to call attention to it because there'll be talk about it in the press. We, we think it might be a little brighter this year. And we don't think the moon will interfere uh, too much with it. So do the... The, there are they two different debris fields that you're going no, that the I, earth is going through perfect so here's what's going on you ready every night there are meteors every night doesn't matter when every night earth plows through several hundred tons of meteors a day that is terrifying <laughs> terrifying yes my god man why would you tell be. me that why <laughs> would you say that okay i'm sorry <laughs> jeez people say oh the universe is so balanced and so perfect it's like no we're in a shooting gallery oh my and, goodness and and so Practically every sort of shooting star, by the way, these phrases refer to the same phenomenon. Shooting star, falling star, mm -hmm. uh, meteor. Right. They're all referring to a tiny particle that Earth slams into in our orbit around the sun. Wow. Right. And we're going about 18 miles a second. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's that? It's like 30,000 kilometers a second around the sun. That's fast. And if you're just minding your own business out there in space right. and Earth slams into you, right. the our atmosphere will look like a brick wall. Yeah, it's at like that uh, speed. Yeah, it's kind of like the um, the uh, the bug that hits your windshield. You know, <laughs> that's what these like, you know, that bug, if that bug, if you weren't going 70 miles an hour. You know, that bug, see, at 70 miles an hour, it's like, did that bug just break my windshield? Like, I, what, <laughs> what the hell was that? You know? But, right. Yeah. So actually, there's research on bug deaths on your windshield, by the way. And there's good evidence that they die before they splatter. Really? Because the air pressure right before they hit the windshield, because you have direct air coming up against your glass. And that pressure is very high. And we haven't interviewed the bugs, but there's, <laughs> there's suggestions that there's sufficient pressure to just squash them before they actually get smushed. So they actually the explode from the pressure and then the, the, the remnants hit your windshield. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> so all I'm saying is 70 miles an hour, a bug on your windshield is not that much different from a particle of dirt in the solar system slamming into our atmosphere right. going any you know 10 20 30 miles a second okay right. so so that's what's going on there so now here's what happens we not only have all this leftover debris 
that we plow through every day. It's not just every night. This is happening throughout the day. You just don't see it because the sun is out. Okay, so let's just be clear. So as we plow through space, there's a subset of all comets and asteroids whose orbit crosses the orbit of the Earth. Mm -hmm. These are called near-Earth objects, okay. which is euphemism for stuff that will eventually hit, slam into hit Earth. you, and right. Caught it you. Right. <laughs> Yeah, it's like somebody when I was when I was in elementary school and there was a kid named Martin and Martin used to uh try to find me and take my money and he Bully would Martin. It, okay. Yeah, he was a bully and he would put his fist uh and I called it like a near face object. He never hit me. <laughs> he never hit me. He just held near it face. held it near my face. <laughs> It said, give me your money. <laughs> a near face. And I had a near face object. And the, the threat, the threat of the near face object hitting me would cause me to give him my money. <laughs> okay. Uh, and just, just for, for those young viewers and listeners, that was back in the day when every school had a bully and you wouldn't even report them to the principal they were just part of life yes right that was there just was, there was no anti-bullying campaigns like <laughs> right they were just okay i gotta deal with the bully today i'll right. go in the back door sneak around the bushes right you know. and anti-bully was alternate route home <laughs> that was anti-bully <laughs> Stra right. bully strategies bully were... dra right so here's what happens if they're a comet what happens with comets as they get near the sun, we all know they grow tails. And tail is a little bit of a misnomer because it's just a stream of gas that extends in the opposite direction of wherever the sun is. So as they approach the sun, yes, it looks like there's a tail dragging behind them. But as they move back away from the sun, the tail is in front. Wow. Okay. It's in front of their motion. So yeah, yeah. we think of tails as something that brings up the rear. Right. And here, it only does that when they're on its way in. And on its way out, it brings up the front. So, so but anyhow, we'll, they're called tails. We'll leave it at that. What happens is, what ha happened was, yeah. <laughs> what, what happens is, as these gases evaporate from the comet, there's other stuff in the comet that's not made of gas that gets dislodged. Okay, it's mostly particles of rocks and debris from the comet. And that just dangles there. It eventually sort of spreads out along the orbit of the comet. But the comet is like this. Do you remember Pigpen from? Yes, from, of course. Uh, the, uh, Charlie Brown. From Peanuts. Yeah. Yeah. Wherever he was, there was this sort A of cloud debris of field dust. in front of him and behind him and all around. That's what comets are. They're pig pen <laughs> orbiting the sun. So, so over time, that debris completely fills the orbit of the comet. Wow. Cool. Okay. Cool. So, but since the orbit crosses the orbit of the Earth, that means this intersection point happens the same time every year. Nice. So we go from just regular meteors in a given night to a meteor shower where we have a concentration of this debris because we're passing through the path of the comet, either ahead of it or behind it. Now, if you happen to come by just before the comet got there or just after the comet had passed, there's an extra concentration of this debris. And we go from a meteor shower to a meteor storm. Nice. You want to watch those are good. Yeah. Those those are good. That sounds like that sounds good. Welcome welcome to the meteor storm. <laughs> Here I am doing it to your ear while you look up in the night sky. The meteor storm. <laughs> so you need some call letters for that. Uh Oh uh, man, what could what could we uh, uh W M T O R? Mm. Me, me. <laughs> yeah. This is WMTR, your meteor, meteor storm, storm. station. <laughs> <laughs>
That's pretty cool. So we've identified the object whose debris we're plowing through during the Geminids. All right. And it's a rock out there known as 3200 Phaethon. P-H-A-E-T-H-O-N. Phaethon. Hmm. Sounds like That's a correct. new electric vehicle. That's <laughs> 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 okay, so this one was a little bit odd because it's kind of like an asteroid that had some outgassing, and but that outgassing helps dislodge particles. So uh, it so it's it's one of the rare meteor showers that is unambiguously associated with just a pure asteroid rather than a comet, because comets are better at leaving debris than asteroids are. Yeah, and by the way, it's called the Geminids because. The direction Earth is moving around the sun at the time, right in front of us is the constellation Gemini. And so your plow, the point, the radiant, the point that you're headed, where you're going to see meteors emanating from on the sky is the constellation Gemini. Sweet. And, and guess where the Perseids come from per in August? Uh, Perseus? Yeah, P constellation Perseus. So that's all. That's that's it. Oh, by the way, how big are these? You didn't ask. They're about the size. Most that you see are about the size of a pea. Oh no, that's the the the, the brightest streaks. Sometimes they, they they they're really bright and they explode at the end. Nice. We call those bolides. 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 Let me get a let me get a low frequency uh, talk on that one. Coming up next, bolides here on WNTOR. <laughs> Your media shower <laughs> storm station. <laughs> bolides. bolides. So bolides could be as big as a golf ball. Right. That would be a really big one. Uh, so most of these are the size of peas and sizes of grains of sand. But the fact that you can see them from such a great distance in the sky is evidence of how much energy is being dissipated into the atmosphere. So you're literally watching them burn up. That's what you're seeing. The light you're seeing is them. Burning you're watching them up. vaporize through the atmosphere. Oh wow! Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a spectacular death for these particles. That's pretty That's cool, right. man. You died well, meteor. You died well, <laughs> <laughs> Spartan. We you exactly. must die. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this is meteor. <laughs> That's. <laughs> That's cool, man. So at a good meteor shower, you get maybe one a minute looking up. Wow. At a meteor storm, you can get anywhere from tens to hundreds, and in some cases, thousands per minute, as has happened in the past. Um, 1833 was a meteor storm that, uh, I don't know if I told this story. I'll tell it quick, and we'll end with it, because we're running out of time. Okay. But uh, back in 1833, Abe Lincoln was a boarder in a in a in one of these you know homes that are that people used to live in temporarily and uh, and it was run by a pastor happened to be run by a pastor and this is in a small town in Illinois and he uh, you know Lincoln was a, a self-educated man he was a learned man okay he was in his early 20s might have been 21 I think and in 1833, we pass near the comet that leaves the Leonid meteor showers. Okay. The Leon, this is, these are these would emanate from the constellation Leo. Happens in November. Okay, so that comet has a 33-year orbit around the sun. So every 33 years, we come near where the comet just was or will soon be. That happened in 1833. There are artists' illustrations of that meteor shower, with people freaking out, looking up. I, I, mouth agape, and it looks like one of these chrysanthemum firework displays. Right. These are people just drawing the meteors falling out of the sky. Wow. The pastor, who is Bible learned, right. remembered a passage in Revelation that said, "At the end of days, stars will fall, fall from, the, from the, sky, the sky. Yes, like figs from a tree. Wow. And land on the ground. That. And so he says, "My gosh, everyone, wake up, repent." The end of the world is near. And Abe Lincoln comes out and he looks up and he notices the Big Dipper is still there and Orion is still there. And Leo, all the, Leo, all the, his known constellations are still there. So he, he said, no, stars are not falling. So he went, went back he to said, sleep. He said, take it easy, chicken little. 
Take it easy. No. <laughs> Jesus isn't attacking, okay? No, not this time. Not, not this, this time. time. He's pissed, but He's not this great. time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, so this. Oh, by the way, that story was uh, retold by uh, Walt Whitman, who was a friend of Abe Lincoln. Wow. By the way, it's in Walt Whitman's notebooks. That's a great story. Yeah. Very cool. A- anyhow, we got to call a quiz there, Chuck. But that's right. everything you ever needed or n- didn't ever know you wanted to know about meteors and meteor showers. Oh, I'm glad we had this talk. I love it. On KMTR. Yes. WMTOR. Meteor <laughs> Radio. <laughs> but you need the folks west of the Mississippi. Right. Uh, KMTR. Right. Your meteor station, round the clock. Nice. Oh, uh, one last one. A uh, last one. Quick, quick, quick. I, we're, we're so out of time. Uh, back in uh, 1999, that same meteor shower that that Abe Lincoln saw, uh, I went to the Brooklyn Bridge uh, and brought my like three year old daughter with me at one in the morning. And the reason why they happen really late because that's the when you look straight up, that's the side of the Earth that's moving through space. So uh, after midnight. And into the early morning hours are the best times to view it. It'll still happen other times, but the best is after midnight. Anyhow, I'm there, and and I'm looking up, and then I see this star appear. And it got brighter and brighter. Then it just disappeared. And then there was a puff of smoke. And I said, whoa, what was that? And then I realized what I had just witnessed. What's that? You know what it was? Please don't it say was it was a, a helicopter going down. No, no, it was a meteor headed straight for me. <laughs> There's no streak. Okay. You know, we're so accustomed to watching streaks, right. right? Okay, if it's streaking, it means it's going to land to your left or to your right. Oh, my God. This puppy, oh, my God. I didn't realize it till after. I mean, it would have been too late right. for me to. I mean, it took me about 10 seconds after I witnessed this to say, oh, my gosh, that meteor headed straight for me. And that would not have ended well. It would have taken me out plus the Brooklyn Bridge. Yeah. <clears throat> that is the proverbial light at the end of the tunnel actually <laughs> being a train. <laughs> uh, exactly. <laughs> I see the light. I see, I see the light. <laughs> <laughs> Take me, Lord. <laughs> yep, that's exactly what's going to happen yeah. <laughs> in about four seconds. That's great. Chuck, always good to have you here. Always a pleasure. This has been Star Talk Explainer. Chuck Nice and Neil deGrasse Tyson. Keep looking up.